What a day in the stock market today, guys. What a day. We had the S&P 500 close up 2%, the Russell up 3.2%, we had the NASDAQ up 26 as we had the Dow close up 1.3%, and the VIX went down 5%. So we got a lot to break down in this video. We'll talk a little bit about Jerome Powell. We'll break down some stocks, and we'll break down some earnings, charts, kind of where my head is at in these markets but before we do get your free money from Moomoo up to five free shares of stock each up to 3500 bucks all you guys got to do is use that link down below deposit at least 100 bucks and you get up to five stocks and if you deposit at least 2000 bucks you get a free share of Twitter as well guaranteed so get your free money guys link down below and with that being said cheers let's get right into the video so like I said guys we had a fantastic green day overall today all the indexes went up a good amount a very good good amount geez guys it was uh it was one of those green days that was pretty much you know we were green all day today and we had the vix closed down five percent like i mentioned it closed in the mid 20s as you guys can see in the metals uh the metals didn't do much today uh currently they're right around break even gold is at least silver is up 0.3 percent and what we're noticing here guys which is very bullish is we took out the highs from the pre-market and that actually happened funny enough aftermarket you know it's, it's funny how that played out but we hit around 407.80 in the pre-market on spy here <clears throat> excuse me guys and you guys can see now in the aftermarket we are almost at 409 dollars a share so we are breaking out of that pre-market high which is great and pulling back here on the four hour chart for spy we are now trading above the 50 sma we have a bit of an inverse head and shoulders playing out look at that guys let me uh show you all we have the left shoulder we have the head right here, and then we have the right shoulder right here. So we have an inverse head and shoulders playing out. And again, we're right around 408, 409. So the next big level of resistance is uh, right around 410, 415. If that point breaks, maybe we start making a move towards um, the 180 SMA, which in this case is right around 422 to 423 on this four hour um, time frame. And also, if you guys take a look, right around 415, that was resi or rather not resistance, support back in the end of February all throughout the uh, middle of March. So that makes it a big resistance right now. Again, that is right at 415 bucks. And you guys, I should know we had Jerome Powell speaking at the Washington, not Washington, the uh, you know Wall Street Journal event earlier today, and he pretty much, I mean, nothing crazy came out, but he pretty much was saying, you know, he's fighting inflation like we, um, you know, expect him and the Fed to be doing right now, and he said, quote, if that involves, or uh, yeah, involves moving past broadly understood levels of neutral, we won't hesitate to do that. In other words, um, you know, he won't hesitate hesitate cranking up those rates uh, quicker, right, past neutral, which he needs to do considering inflation is way hotter than usual, right? So that makes sense, right? He also said, we will go until we feel we're at a place where we can say financial conditions are in an appropriate place. We see inflation coming down. Um, so he's going to be doing this, in other words, until he sees inflation coming down, which we saw month over month. Um, it did come down a lot, but overall, that annualized number, it didn't come down much. You know, the uh, the high was 8.5% in March, and I think just now for April, it came in at 8.3%. So until we see that annualized number come down, you know, you know, Jerome Powell, he's saying, He's cranking up those rates, baby, so get ready for that, as we're all pretty much ready for that. The markets are expecting, um, you know, they're, they're expecting that. And he also said, we'll go to that point. There won't be any hesitation about that. So he seems really aggressive, you know. Is he bluffing? Who knows? Because at the end of the day, we know the Fed can't really raise rates astronomically. I mean, we can't really get past, I'd say, three percent maybe three and a half percent let's say he, he he raised the rates to seven or eight percent it would be a catastrophe out there so you got to realize you got to kind of take that with a grain of salt you know he's trying to seem aggressive but we know that there's limits to uh you know how much he can raise the rates 
um, you know, without there being a catastrophe, right? Because if he ro- ra- raised them to 8%, you know, there's going to be a financial crisis like no other. And we all kind of know that. Or if you didn't know that, um, go look deeper into that because their balance sheet is so big. You know, there, there's just so much that goes into it. So Jerome Powell, not not much, uh, you know, not, nothing crazy came out. A lot of the same, right? And when it comes to Triple Q, I mean, look at this, guys. It's kind of similar to what I said with SPY. I'm noticing an inverse head and shoulders here on the four-hour time frame. We closed above 305, which is great. We're now at a multi-day high. We're above the moving averages. All we got to do really now is break 310. And from 310 to 330, based on this four-hour, you know, that is where I see, or I could see, Triple Q going in the short term. You know, maybe up towards that uh, 180 SMA. And did I not say a relief rally was in store? Um, You know, now we're getting it. We're getting it. This is what I was talking about. And who knows how long it's going to last. For all we know, it could already be over. Um, You know, that's why I kind of... I played it safe today. I locked in profits on uh, on my Adobe trade and my VOO trade. And all you guys in my Patreon know that. You get all my alerts, real-time call-outs, morning videos, more access to me throughout the day. That's linked down below. If you guys do want to check it out and kind of keep up with what I'm doing, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of where my head is at. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Smash that like button if you haven't done so already. And let's get into now some stocks that I'm looking at and a couple that reported earnings this morning, which I'm sure a lot of you guys or maybe all of you guys saw Walmart. Let's pop it up. WMT. Look at this falling knife, guys. Walmart went down 11.3% today. That's got to be one of the worst days in recent history, I mean, I I can't even I can't even remember the last time Walmart went down over ten percent on the day. I'm sure it's happened. Obviously, it's probably happened before, but I can't remember it. So they ended up doing Q1 revenue of 141.57 billion dollars, adjusted EPS of a dollar thirty, and the U.S. same store sales were up about 5.6 percent, I believe. That is including fuel, X fuel. It's right around um, 4%. And the reason why they're falling, guys, at least based on what I uh, what I've gathered here, you know, they lowered full year EPS outlook, which I'm not going to sift through all these lines here on the live news tab because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of coverage on Walmart today, but realize that EPS guidance came in soft. And, you know, that that's all it takes at some point, right? You know, if a stock's running up, pricing perfection, and look, this, this just two, three weeks ago was at all-time highs. It was pricing perfection. If we get something out of the ordinary, something unexpected, it could crash the stock. And now here we are. We're right at 130, 132, which is a support, strong support stemming back from the uh, end of September. You guys can see we held that, you know, from September, October, all throughout the beginning of this year and uh, even now. So we'll see if short term buyers maybe step in here. As of now, for me, I'm not touching it. It's still a falling knife. But if we find support over the next couple of days, weeks, you know, this could be a rebound play. Let's see. Uh, let's see how it plays out, guys. Home Depot is another one that I'm looking at. This one up 2% roughly on the day. They reported earnings this morning, $4.09 EPS versus $3.67. Estimated revenue came in at $38.9 billion versus $36.71 billion. And Q1 same store sales completely surprised. They came in at what? 2.2% up 2.2% which the estimate was a loss of 2.9%. So they surprised on the Q, uh, Q2 or Q1 same store sales. And they did a lot better than Walmart, guys. And for me, I have my alert set at 320 bucks. If you guys take a look, that's slightly above the 180 SMA here. And that's also the resistance stemming back from the end of March, almost two, uh, two months ago. So if we start breaking out of 320, there's a wide open gap to about 340, which was that high from the middle of March. Then from 340, no joke, <laughs> this could be going 370, 375. Granted, if we get into a recession, if we're already in a recession, Home Depot, it's it's one of those stocks that is going to, uh, I don't want to say collapse, suffer completely, go out of business, but it's going to feel it, you know, and that's kind of what it's been pricing in. But let's say on the flip side, maybe we're not in a recession. You know, the sell-off got a bit overblown, which you could argue it has. It's down almost 30%. This could rip like no other, especially after reporting 
surprising earnings, solid earnings, nice Q1 same store sales. So I have my alert set. I'm watching Home Depot as a trade, and uh, we'll see how that ends up playing out. We also had JD.com. Yes, guys, a Chinese stock, JD.com. Call me crazy, call me crazy, but... I have most of my money in U.S. stocks, and uh, I'm going to gamble a little bit on Chinese stocks. Call me crazy, though, right, guys? Call me crazy because I own a little bit of Alibaba. I don't own JD.com, but I do own Alibaba, and I do catch a lot of flack for that. A lot of you guys roast me in the comments, which is fine, you know, which is fine. Uh, the way I'm looking at it is, look, like I said, I have most of my money in U.S. companies, U.S. ETFs. Why not gamble a little bit? on a Chinese stock. I mean, you should see some of the comments I get. You'd think I'm committing, um, you know, heinous crimes. I mean, Jesus, can I own a Chinese stock just, you know, um, just uh, to gamble a little bit? And uh, that's kind of where I'm at. And look today, look today, JD did well. Again, I don't own G uh, JD, but I do own Alibaba. JD today went up 4%, which then ended up moving Alibaba. Alibaba went up over 6% on the day. So going back to JD, they reported earnings. They did 40 cents EPS versus 24 cents. So they crushed EPS and they beat on revenue by a wide margin. And mind you, this is all in US dollars, right? Revenue came in at $37.8 billion versus $34.82 billion estimated. So they crushed EPS they crushed revenue, and I have my alert set at 58 bucks. We close right under these moving averages today. If we break 58 into the 60s, there could be a lot more upside here in the short term when it comes to JD.com. And uh, the other ones I'm watching, guys, I'm also watching Target and Costco. We had Walmart today. We had Home Depot today. We probably have Lowe's coming up. When's Lowe's? Maybe next week or tomorrow. Actually, Lowe's is tomorrow, pre-market. We're going to be watching Lowe's in the morning. Keep your eyes out on that one. Let's see how their earnings are uh, looking. Um, going back to Target, look at this. This is right by the bottom of the channel here on the four-hour chart. Pretty oversold. I am seeing um, a bit of a, a bullish divergence as well. They report Target reports tomorrow morning as well alongside of uh, Lowe's. So for this stock, I have my alert set at 230. I might put another one. Uh, let's put it at 220 bucks a share. Mark is at or above 220 bucks. Costco. Let's pull up Costco. This one's been destroyed lately, but overall, even though it's down 20% it's in a bear market in just the past couple of weeks, the trend still looks solid. If you look at the four hour chart, it's clearly in an uptrend still, right? If you look at the yearly chart, it's clearly in an uptrend and on the three-year chart as well. So this is just simply a healthy pullback in the very short term. It's a big pullback, 20%, but it is healthy nonetheless. And Costco reports, I think, next week. Um, yeah, they report next week on the 26th, which is what? Um, nine days from today. What is that? Not this Thursday, but next Thursday, right? Yeah, next Thursday is when Costco reports. So this might be the one worth playing because these earnings we're getting might influence Costco's price, right? Because they're all kind of correlated at the end of the day. Maybe not Costco and Home Depot, uh, but you could make an argument. Um, all these are kind of grouped, but you know, Walmart, Costco, Target, we got to see, you know, if these uh, earnings influence each other. And since Costco doesn't report for another 10 days, it might run before earnings. It might dump before earnings based on these other earnings that we're going to get. So let's watch out for it. I'm going to set my alert. I'm just going to put it at 500 bucks. We'll see what it does from there. Mark is at or above $500 a share. There we go. And let's talk about one or two more guys. Airbnb at this point in time, if you guys take a look at it, is by the bottom of the channel here. It's very oversold. I'm getting a bit of, I'm seeing a bit of a bullish divergence. And again, we're very oversold. We just hit a fresh low of $111. That's pretty much half of what it was back in November, the middle of November, which is nuts. You know, this stock has halved in the past six months. So I'm thinking if we get some sort of relief rally in the short term, or I mean, we we already are getting this rally, but if this rally continues in the overall markets, um, I think Airbnb, the green will continue as well. You know, this went up 2.7% today, pretty strong day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my alert at the highs from last week. If you guys pull up the five-day chart, you'll notice last week we struggled pretty much all week at 124. So I'm going to just put my alert right there, $124. If that point breaks, whether it's tomorrow, later this week, 
I don't know. But if that point breaks, watch out for more upside. And look at some of these, um, you know, higher growth speculative companies. A lot of these did well today. Coinbase went up 14% almost. Big day for Coinbase. It closed at 70 bucks. And look at what it's done over the past couple of days. It's, it's crazy. It was at $40. Now it's at 70 It is up 77% in just the past couple of days. Freaking unbelievable. We had DraftKings today, which I'm long DraftKings, and I'm down on DraftKings. I've told you guys that many times. DraftKings today went up 11%, over 11%. Solid. AMC went up 10%. We had GameStop up 9.3%. AMD, which I covered in my previous video today, this went up over 8%. Look at AMD, guys. This is potentially starting to break out. We're not fully there yet, but we are above the moving averages and now above 100 bucks a share. If we start breaking 105, 110, I think this is a breakout uh, candidate, no doubt about it. Tesla went up 5% today, Snapchat 5%. Overall, you guys get the point. It was a very strong green day today. Markets are starting to show signs of that short-term rally continuing. Now the million dollar or, uh, you know beginning. Now the million dollar question is, is it going to continue? And that's kind of what um, we got to wait and uh, kind of watch out and see for. I mean, we are above the moving averages on SPY and uh, triple Q on the four hour chart, right? Or at least the 50 moving average. So let's see if we continue that momentum. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, smash that like button and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, we need 35 more subscribers until that 25,000 uh, subscriber milestone. So make sure you guys do that. Get your free money from Moom up to five free shares of stock. Just deposit at least a hundred bucks and you get up to five stocks each up to 2,500 bucks. And if you deposit at least 2000 bucks, you get up to five stocks and a free share of Twitter on top of that guaranteed and if you guys want to take your money out after you get all your free money you keep all your money guys it's not like Moomoo keeps the 2000 or anything like that you keep all your money and you could also join my Patreon and check out the Weebo link as well link down below and with that being said uh, that's it I'll catch you guys in the next video thanks for watching as always peace out